Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be God, Amen. 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 Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to the slaughter and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes saying let us destroy the tree with its fruits let us cut him off from the land of living so that his name will no longer be remembered but you Lord of the hosts who judge righteously who try the heart and the mind let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will read Psalm 54 in unison. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, in your cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ears to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God, behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render me to those who spy on me, and in your faithfulness to soldiers. I will honor you with the name of the sacrifice, and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from my 
A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality and hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and dis disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly. In order to spend what you get on your pleasures, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. They did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When Mark was compiling his gospel some 40 years or so after the death and resurrection of Jesus, those who heard and read his story seemed to have had a lot of trouble grasping the truth 
of a Messiah whose leadership was seen in suffering, serving, sacrifice. Both Mark and even Jesus in his time had to fight against the false idea that greatness was seen only in military power or material success. Oddly enough, something we still have to deal with in our own day. For our society still suffers from this addiction to greatness when it comes to understanding leadership. Families, schools, sports often hand on this attitude usually unconsciously, but the message is clear. You must be the grace, the best, the greatest on top, sometimes even at the expense of others. Today we see that even Jesus' disciples were not immune to this addiction. In this little story, three distinct things stand out. First, on the way to Capernaum, after the transfiguration on the holy mountain, Jesus reminds them of what lies ahead. Betrayal, death, resurrection. They don't understand, and they're certainly not going to ask any questions. The scene then jumps to them bickering among themselves about power and positions of control in the coming kingdom. They must have been embarrassed when Jesus questioned them, although clearly he knew. Finally, he makes one more attempt to help them understand that whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Still, they are silent, no doubt ashamed of themselves. They'd heard these opposites before, to save life, lose life, to be great, be a servant. Jesus is always talking like this. This time he does something remarkably different. He takes a child from the crowd puts the child in the center, and picks the child up and simply says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Here they have been thinking about place and prestige in the kingdom. And Jesus is talking about a child holding a child. He wants us to see that child also, not because the child is cute or cuddly or innocent, perfect or curious. Jesus points to the child because the child was at the bottom of the social heap. Already this summer in Mark's Gospel, we have met several children Jairus' daughter, at the point of death. The Syrophoenician woman's little girl who was possessed by an unclean spirit. A young boy who has convulsions, which the disciples weren't able to heal. For Mark, it is very clear that children are not symbols of holiness or innocence or cuteness. They are a sign of things gone wrong. They are the other. But Jesus brings this child from the margins into the very center. It's a downright touching moment, depicted by numerous artists down through the centuries no doubt the disciples' hearts must have melted as well. But by the next chapter, they've forgotten all about it. 
And when others bring children to Jesus for a blessing, the disciples scold them and send them away. Was Jesus a hopeless romantic when he set a little child in the midst of the disciples? Perhaps. But instead of a hopeless romantic, let us call him a hopeful fanatic. Jesus was fanatic about opening up the family of God to those nobody wanted to see or have around. He was obsessed by extending hospitality to those considered the least. He didn't follow the rules or the rubrics. He healed when he wasn't supposed to, touched people he shouldn't have touched, ate with the wrong crowd, and he dared to talk about suffering and death right after that glorious mount moment on the mountaintop. Jesus taught us the priorities of God are not up, but down, down there. All our hope and arguments about greatness mean nothing if we don't stoop down low enough to see the invisible and hurting ones in our midst. On that day in Capernaum, Jesus singled out a child and brought the words of heaven down to earth. Perhaps he even whispered those words in the ear those words he had heard on the mountaintop. You are God's beloved. And to the disciples and to us, he said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and not only me, but the one who sent me. Alas, this is not as simple as it sounds. To welcome the little people of the world in Christ's name means that we, as the people of God, have to speak up for the powerless, reach out to the poor and the hungry, and the lost and the rejected, welcome the stranger, the homeless, the unemployed, the other, Stand up against those beliefs that feed war, hatred, and violence. Seek out those whom society dismisses as different, less valuable, or less important. All those symbolized by the little child, Christ, brought into the center of the circle, most precious in God's eyes. It is the truth of our calling as people of love that by virtue of our baptism we have promised, promised to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. We know it's not easy. And today's opening colic says it well. We get anxious about earthly things and forget heavenly things. However, as we come home to this place and this table week after week to be fed and nourished, we can and should refocus our efforts by keeping our eyes on Jesus and asking for the grace and the strength to let God's love flow more simply and human humanly through each of us in the coming days. Amen.
resurrection of the dead, to the light of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God our helper, the source of all wisdom, mercy, and peace, saying, Holy God, hear our prayer. For the Church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kevin, our bishop, that we may imitate the example of Jesus, not seeking to be first, but becoming servants of all. Holy God, hear our prayer. For this parish family, that we may recognize our common humanity and accompany one another along the journey of life. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all who serve the children of our community in Christ's name, that they may teach us how to welcome Christ in simplicity of heart. Holy God, hear our prayer. For healing among the daughters and sons of Abraham, that God will bring reconciliation and greater cooperation among the followers of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Holy God, hear our prayer. For those affected by storms, floods, and fires, for refugees and those fleeing violence, that they may find safety in new communities of welcome and the resources needed for life. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all those commended to our prayers, remembering especially Anne, Dion, Betty, and Dick, Jean, Amy, Liz, Faye, Kathy, Glenn and Maureen, Kay, Frank, Marlene, Pat L, Amadeo, and those who you may know, name, that they may find healing and strength in the good news of the dying and rising of Jesus Christ. Holy God, hear our prayer. For those who have died, remembering especially that they may be welcome to share in the joy of God's presence forever. Holy God, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer, Matthew the, the Apostle and Evangelist, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord our God. God of mercy, hear the prayers we offer this day. Strengthen us with your wisdom from above, and bring forth in our lives a harvest Humility and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you. Sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and give us. God has 
given us a glorious last Sunday of summer. Today, as we celebrate what we're calling homecoming, and if nothing else, to welcome the homecoming of our beloved sister Patty and her daughter Rochelle. So please do join us in Monine Hall for a chance to greet Sister Patty and to have some wonderful refreshments and fellowship. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us, prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us in the covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent the eternal word, who made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family, and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts and be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us to the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Mary the God-bearer, Matthew, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ. God of abundance, you have met us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and honor. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world. Continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love and those you pray for, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.